We begin this morning with Nigeria's labor union, NLC's rejection of the hike in the pump price of petrol. NLC says it is provocative and totally unacceptable. In a statement, NLC President Joe Ajero says the 18% increase is designed to worsen the poverty level and hardship in Nigeria. The labor union also condemns the proposed handout of 8,000 naira as palliatives to 12 million households. It warns that it may be forced to withdraw from talks with the federal government over its handling of the matter. Well, many Nigerians are yet to come to terms with the surge in the price of petrol at filling stations. Arise News correspondents captured the feelings of citizens from different parts of the country. We begin from the southeast region where many residents in Imo and Enugu states woke up on Tuesday morning to a sudden upward review in the prices of fuel from 530 naira to 595 naira per liter. This development forced commercial vehicle operators and motorcyclists to increase transport fares. Uh, it's not a good idea. It's not a good, they are killing masses. We are the people suffering it. Adding fuel, adding fuel, other people, other maybe of other uh, uh, petty petty uh, traders, they will add uh, their money, they add money of, of what, they, what they are saying. It's not doing us favor. You see, they say palliative, palliative. Where, where is the palliative? We are suffering. You see, I don't know what to do now for to, to take my child at a point for her exam. Residents in Ekiti State in the southwest region are agonizing over the increments while appealing to the federal government to provide a quick solution to the rising prices, including the provision of palliatives. It's a big problem, so to say. I was in a filling station the other time. Now I'm, I'm in another one now, and the gate is already closed now. And they are selling 585, 600 everywhere now. So it's getting serious. We don't know what to do again. In the northwest and northeast, residents of Kano and Bono states lament the hike, saying the obvious effect of the landing cost from Lagos is taking a huge toll on them, as petrol now sells at an all-time high of 620 naira per litre in the most filling stations. According to them, the continuing increase in the petroleum price hike is an economic disaster in the making. When I came out, I realized it's all already here and people are already queuing up maybe to buy the cheaper one to save some cost. But unfortunately, this is where we are. And in the south-south region, a cross-section of rivers residents living in Port Harcourt, the state capital, are appealing to the federal government to intervene in Tuesday's abrupt increase of the pump price of petrol due to hardship that a large number of Nigerians are facing. We all we are suffering the same thing. Even it wasn't easy for us, right from when the fuel was 520, we suffered. It looks as if we are working for the petrol station. Half of all we got go back to the fuel. And at the end of the whole day, you walk like an elephant, you eat like ants. And passengers too, they are complaining. And we too, we feel for them because some of them are civil servants. Nigerians are yet to understand what is going on. This is uh, unfair to the common man in Nigeria, a man who earns uh, the minimum wage of less than 30,000 naira. I wonder what people, how people will be able to get to their places of work and still have something at the, and go back and still have something at the end of the month to save. You know, it's uh, really alarming how it's going to affect the cost of commodities. It's going to affect the cost of living. With the prevailing harsh economic conditions. Many Nigerians across the state are urging the federal and state governments to swiftly find solutions to the fuel price hike and provide palliatives quickly so as to reduce poverty and prevent an increase in crimes. Benga Ashiru, Arise News. Meanwhile, Nigeria's national oil company, NNPC Limited, blames market forces and not supply issues for petrol price increases. The Petroleum Regulatory Authority also says the rise in the price of crude is a contributing factor, as well as changes in freight prices and other costs incurred by petrol importers. I don't have the details at this moment. You know, we have marketing wing of our company. They adjust prices depending on the market realities. 
and, and this is really what is happening. This is the meaning of uh, getting sure, making sure that the market regulates itself so that you know, prices will go up and sometimes they will come down also. And this is really what we are seeing. Uh, in, re in reality, this is how the market, market works. There is no supply issue completely. Uh, it is not a supply. When you go to the market, you buy the product, you come to the market and sell it at its ongoing uh, its prevailing market price. Nothing to do with supply. We don't have supply issues. There are a robust supply. We have over 32 days of uh, supply in, in country. As a regulator, you know, I told you uh, back in May that we are not going to be setting price. The market will determine itself. And as you saw back in early June, when, uh, when prices came out, it was based on the cost of importation plus other logistics of distribution and, of course, the profit margin by the importer. This market is uh, deregulated. It's open to all participants. As I mentioned also yesterday uh, when I was in Lagos, we had over 56, or we have 56 marketing companies that applied for and obtained licenses to import. Out of those, 10 of them have indicated to supply within the third quarter, which is July, August, September. Well, if I petrol price, 612 naira in some parts, and NPC, at least, um, filling stations, which uh, Dr. Bat actually announced during newspaper review yesterday, and we saw the effect of this across the um, country. What's your take on the story? Okay. My comment will be in three parts. At first, the first part will be history. In the 70s, a war happened called the Yom Kippur War. And because of that, crude oil prices did rise from two or three dollars per barrel to about 11, 10, 12, 13 dollars per barrel. Nigeria decided to subsidize for its citizens then. Because prior to that time, we had a refinery out of Harcourt built by Shell Daisi. And production was a bit stretched for the people. So the government said, let's subsidize. This was even before the NNPC was to come a couple of years afterwards. In the 80s, it became a problem. In fact, I remember a This Week news, uh, magazine episode that talked about the fact that the government was thinking of pulling out petrol subsidies. But it never happened. But the time went on. We returned to democracy. This problem persists until Preston Goodluck Jonathan tried pulling this out in 2012. On the 11th of January 2012, President Tinubu wrote an article, or maybe it was published, in the Nation newspaper, giving his take on the subsidy issue. He famously called it a scam, while the protest you know, raged on, and he called it a Jonathan tax. Is it safe to say that this is President Tinubu's tax today? Any time policy and politics mix, you breed catastrophe. Anytime politics and policies mix, you breed catastrophe. We ought to have pulled our subsidy in 2012. That was the best time. The economy was doing well. But because politics was mixed with a the policy, then we bred catastrophe like we had in 2012. And for all those that went out to occupy Nigeria, we are here again. Doesn't Mr. Goodluck Jonathan deserve some apology? Secondly, what's the problem on ground? We knew this was going to happen. Once the marketers started to lift, then definitely we're going to have problems because one, our forex prices has gone up, international factors, oil price, we have pre-existing wars and all of that. Then the past through effect will be for the citizens. And please quote me. I repeat, quote me, there is no way in the world that the government does not make intervention in the petrol price, energy price for the people. Ronald Reagan deregulated the petrol economy in America in 1981. Till date, the American government still makes interventions. How do they do it? They say they are releasing their strategic national reserves. Quote me, in the UK recently, Rishi Sunak had to work on some taxes as regards petrol sales. Because energy is important for the people. The third part, I would say, and that's why we have the increase in price, and we saw this coming. We had always talked about it, so I'm not surprised. The third part I will talk about this morning is solutions. So what are the solutions? At some point down the line, the government will still have to make interventions as regards energy pricing. You cannot continue to pass on the capitalist costing 
to the citizens. You're going to have a knockout ricochet effect. Inflation is going to go up. It's going to be hardship. Solutions, multiple pronged approach. Number one, we have four working modular refineries. Incentivize those refineries. Ensure they get crew so they can produce locally. Ensure the Dangote refinery comes on board so they can augment. Let us move to local production big time. We can't keep using our forex to import. And also, if we can sell crude to these local refineries in Naira, so that they can get crude, so we can produce and serve our local market. Secondly, show up the agricultural sector. There's a lot of instability. Farmers are being chased around now because of terrorists and all of that. Build silos to be able to store agricultural produce, to cut out the middlemen. Also, ensure that to a large extent, you fix the insecurity problems on the farm so we can have food. And please, President Tinubu, the other borders have not been opened. Please open those borders. Let food come in. Let food come in. Give farmers seeds. Give them palliatives and all of that. He has done some of that. Also, as a point I'd like to make as regards logistics, to transport petrol is a big problem. Yeah. So please, all those other moribund narrow gauge lines, we can resuscitate them to transport petrol and agri-produce. I hear there's no time. I'll yield the floor. What is the effect of all of this? For the second time, within a space of less than uh, two months, so much has happened within the Nigerian economy. But what we should focus on is the cost of living. Inflation has gone up. They say it's now 22.79%. But with what happened yesterday, maybe the National Bureau of Statistics will now see the need to take a second look at what it published as the inflation figures for the month of, uh, of June. We didn't have that kind of uh, voodoo calculation under Yemi Kale, but these new people who are in charge of the National Bureau of Statistics, they don't seem to know their work, but Yemi Kale has moved on, so maybe we don't need to call him back. But the argument that the experts have pushed forward is that fuel price was bound to go up because as the uh, CEO, group CEO of uh, NMPCL, tells us, it's not about supply, it's about market forces. The uh, vice president of Nigeria, Alaji Kashim Shetima, also yesterday said, no, this is not about supply, it's about market forces, market realities. What are these market realities for the benefit of the people who are affected? Now, the international price of crude has gone up, it's over $80. Previously, when the calculation was done, <clears throat> it was lower than that. What it means is that if the international price of crude goes up to maybe $100, we will pay more. The skepticism is that in this country, when things go up, they don't always come down. Would there be a point? Are we likely to reach a point with all the external pressures, the war in Ukraine and the uh, global issues? get to a point where the price of crude will go down. So Nigerians are like, they've not seen anything yet. I mean, people have been putting, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, things on social media saying, we have not seen anything yet. It's now 671 uh, naira per liter. That's uh, in the north because of transportation costs and all of that. It's even likely to be higher in certain parts of the north and slightly lower in the south. So that's the problem we face. The second thing, again, is the forex, uh, the forex regime. The Naira, as you speak now, in the I and E window, is about $800 to, uh, you know, to the dollar. Uh, yes, 800 Naira to the dollar. If it reaches 1,000 to the dollar, <laughs> we are in trouble, serious trouble. So this is the reality of what we face in Nigeria at this moment. <laughs> And that's why, you know, uh, organized labor is saying that, look, you have to get the local refineries to work. And secondly, the committees that was originally promised to look into the issue of palliatives, organized labor, through his president, Joe Ajero, is saying, where are those uh, committees? Those committees have not been set up. You are just taking decisions on top of the head of the Nigerian people and imposing more hardship on them. And that's why organized labor is saying it will pull out of the negotiations. Organized labor wants to pull out. And I said, as to uh, the reference to 2012, I've seen uh, some people putting out a video there saying, where are all those people 
who gathered here at Toyota in 2012, January, saying that the revolution had begun. At that time, the increase in fuel price was from 65 Naira to 120 Naira. Now we have had, you know, <laughs> almost double the, the matter. Everybody is quiet. So hypocrisy seems to be a major part of the Nigerian character. I'm not inciting anybody, but it is uh, instructive that those people who call themselves the conscience of the people, we, we can't see them. All. No, no, nobody is coming forward to say anything. So hypocrisy, people thrive on hypocrisy in this country. Those, some of those people are not dead, they are alive, and they, are, they have all remained quiet. Number three, yesterday, the government came out with a statement saying that, okay, government is going to review the palliatives, uh, you know, that it has offered, the, all the monies uh, that we have been promised, the $800 uh, million dollars from, uh, from the World Bank, the $500 million from the IMF, the savings from first subsidy remover. Okay, what is the meaning of that review? Nobody has given us any explanation other than that, oh, President Tinubu is a listening president, is aware that there's hardship in the country, therefore, the palliatives will be reviewed. Organized Labor is saying it has no information with regard to those uh, uh, palliatives. We, the people have not seen the effect of any palliatives. They say they will re re release fertilizer and grains to, to farmers. <laughs> well, how? how? How much do we have in the National uh, Strategic Reserve? of the country, what, what do we really have there? So these are some of the issues. This disconnect between policy formation and policy implementation, which is an issue that I had brought up on this program, that there must be a proper connection there. You know, uh, it's not just for government to come up with uh, certain things that look like, uh, you know, populist or to, to, to give a uh, uh, sop to Severus as it is otherwise caused, to tell us, you know, what they think we would like to, to hear. Um, Nigerians are groaning. Capital formation is an issue. Investors are having issues. Even ordinary people are having problems. There are queues on the streets of uh, Lagos and elsewhere. In Abel Kuta, uh, uh, you know, per drop, uh, uh, you know, transportation drop, used to be 100 naira. It has gone up to 240 naira. Hence, many Nigerians are calling for increase in minimum wage because their take-home pay can no longer take them home. I hope we will not get to a situation whereby those consequences that uh, President Buhari ran away from will not uh, become the real reality that we have to deal with. And in fact, that will be the real market forces. So what Nigerians have been confronted with is the meaning of market forces. And some experts on the subject are saying there is no country in the world where you don't at least provide some form of uh, subsidy. Well, the nature of that subsidy, we we'll, would we'll like to see. The palliatives, we we'll like to see. Even organized labor is questioning the National Social Register. Now, who are these uh, 12 million people? Because if you look at uh, that uh, 12 million uh, social register, uh, you may not find the uh, Rufa Hussaini's there, name there. You may not find the uh, Ayomairo Aces uh, uh, name there. Okay, uh, uh, well, I don't think they will put. I don't think they will put my name. Wow, <laughs> out of I'm, we know Nigerians. <laughs> but if they give me money, I will take it. I, 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 I will not. I might not in Nigeria. I might not suffer. Anyway, I rest, I'm a suffering Nigerian. I raise my case. All right. Okay. So when we had the conversation, when the conversation around the removal of subsidy had been had in, in the past, what had been often put forward is that subsidy is for the rich. It's the rich that benefits mainly from subsidy. And so a number of people pushed that narrative and talked about how important it was to remove fuel subsidy, and there was no argument. However, we've begun to see post-removal of subsidy that the effect of subsidy is far, of the removal of fuel subsidy is far reaching, whereby it's making the poorest of the poor become even poorer. And so we see its attendant effect, not just on the cost of petrol, but also on food prices. And yesterday we talked about the food inflation. Um, but beyond that, we said it wasn't even a reflection of the current realities. 
Now, we've talked about already, um, Dr. Obatia and Rufai have talked about the market forces. We saw the NNPC CL um, boss talk about the fact that a few reasons for this sudden increase. I'd like to talk about government intervention because what we had been promised post the removal of fuel subsidy was palliatives and a response to ensure that the most vulnerable in Nigeria would not be adversely affected. If you drove through the streets of many states across the country, you would feel the despondency and the feeling of hopelessness for yet another increase in fuel price. Beyond the fact that people have, a number of people have stopped driving and using their cars and more carpools, or you can say the advantages and disadvantages there, there were also fuel queues across, you know, in different parts of the country. And then the price. We talked about Abuja having 612 Naira. Some people said they bought for about 600 Naira. In Ibogun, we just got a report now in Ifo, Ogun State. Someone bought for 700 naira for a litre. And according to the report, she's a farmer. So if you can imagine her going to buy that amount of um, fuel, or um, that amount of fuel, then imagine how much she'll be selling her produce from that farm and the people who have to purchase that. So let's talk about, palli talk about palliatives this morning, because the president has said that fuel subsidy is here to say before we begin to review whether or not the government would intervene as it's done in every other part of the world, let's talk about palliatives. In response, the, um, spokes, um, the, the a special advisor to the president, Mr. Adeli Alake, released a, a, a statement saying that the president had asked for them to go back to the drawing table to review the 8,000 naira that was promised to Nigerians following feedback and perhaps um, people's response to that. And this is saying that since the 29th of May, we've had two um, huge increase in fuel prices, yet not one um, palliative disbursed. We've only had announcements upon announcements, we will, we will, we shall, we shall, whilst poor people are suffering in Nigeria. This should be the conversation on the table. And what analysts have called for is that, okay, whilst we're sorting out the issues of the economics, macro and micro, let us put food on the table of Nigerians. Because a hungry people is, is a recipe for disaster, is a recipe for chaos and anarchy. We do not want to get to a point where people get to the streets to start protesting because they just had to live. I mentioned the effect of even crime rates because people want to do anything to survive at this point. And if you keep pushing people to the wall, at a wall they will revolt, revolt. So let's talk about putting food on the table of the ordinary Nigerians. What can we start to do? So we've said it and we've discussed that 8,000 naira cannot cut anything. So whilst they're reviewing that um, price or amount in terms of palliatives, can we um, look into the school feeding program again? Children are not going to school anymore because there's no money to even take them to school. And then there's no food to sustain them throughout. Thankfully, they're going on a break right now. But can we begin to work through local groups, the traditional rulers, small communities, and get food to these people? Can we begin to talk about a more realistic approach to providing infrastructure so that people are more empowered to make money? So the first conversation I'm hoping the president will put on the table this morning is, how do we get food to the people in Nigeria? People have endured for two months. No palliatives has been done. Social register still clouded in secrecy. How do we begin to move forward is the task before the president. It's enough to say that we need to take it out, the corruption behind, but you cannot cause the people hardship, further hardship, in order to correct a misnomer. There has to be some sort of balance.